Hey everyone, today is May 3rd, 2023, and we're up in northern Maine. The road I just pulled into was not plowed this year, not logged over the winter. It was just for snowmobiles. Couldn't go down there this year. This area had a big old blowdown. There's going to be a lot of debris in this road. You can definitely tell people have been driving down here, but I don't think they're using it for anything at the moment until mud season is over. Around in the woods, there's still a lot of snow. All the lakes around here in northern Maine are still frozen. Because this area, in this climate, they only have three months of growing season. Typically from June 15th to the middle of September. Just a couple of days ago, it was just snowing up here a little, but it doesn't look like it accumulated. But right now you see there's not a lot of evergreens if we pull into a section of road and we will pretty soon where it's very dense there is still going to be a good amount of snow on the ground gotta just keep it kind of slow on this road today the mud can be slippery it is still mud season in certain areas i do expect to not even be passable the mud will probably be so bad A lot of tree damage over the winter. I just stopped right here because this culvert is flagged. By the hump in the road, it might just be destroyed. Or a blockage. Let's get down there and look. Alright, you see that? You open it up. Nothing really wants to go in there more than it was. Something's wrong with that pipe in the ground. You can see here, likely a frost heave pushed it up. Likely in this area, there's still a lot of frost under the road. It's probably still frozen to an extent. But right here, we might be able to chip away the end. We might. Where is the pipe? It's got some excavator damage. Oh no, look at that. This and here, there's literally a inch slot I'm sticking my hand in right here. And completely crumpled. Yeah, that pipe needs to be replaced. Even if they cut it off a little bit. Should be longer for this size of road. This is the first time this spring I've come out here to do some work this year. We're all loaded up to be out here in the wilderness for a while. Brought four tanks of fuel, enough food for a few weeks. We'll see whatever we may come across. And look at this, as soon as we got into a dark area with the pine trees, still a lot of snow that's just not melting. And the mud is slippery here, and the slush is slippery. I always think it's cool to come up here early May because typically you still got some snow when back at home I'm not used to it anymore. Right here's another culvert pipe that is absolutely destroyed. There's no one on these roads and plus I'll hear them coming minutes before they even show up. I want to show you this. So right here you can see the whole culvert pipe is crushed because it's a plastic piece of garbage. See that? Getting hit by the snow plow, the grater, all filled in with dirt. There's only a little bit of water getting in there while the rest of the water's bypassing down there to a much larger pipe. And here's the other end of the pipe. See, it's able to come out through another crumpled part just a little bit. And that right there is a piece they cut off or it broke off maybe. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull up a little bit. And the next pipe right here where it's going through. Just want to see what we got going on here. Now that we're not blocking the road anymore, just wanted to come down here and have a look. This is a much bigger culvert pipe. And you see the ground is slipping right here. It has nothing to do with the pipe failing. It's just that some of the soil is washing through this retaining wall quite a bit. 
and that is one really big sizable pipe any sort of blockage on it let's have ourselves a look yeah there's a little bit of a beaver dam there we'll come back to this place when the water level is not as high anymore because right now we still are in the spring thaw quite a bunch today's high temperature in this area did not get above 37 but last week it was like 70s every day that's why the snow is mostly gone so right here we have another pipe I can tell by the dip it's completely crushed completely that's what winter does to a plastic pipe but yet they keep on using them even though this is a main artery it makes sense why they would use things that they don't really care about on non main arteries but then again no it doesn't because they'll open it up again eventually now we're getting into an area that has a good amount of mud these roads do kind of scare me sometimes with the mud <clears throat> and not having enough clearance hoping it's late enough in the year where we won't see much of a problem but there's always problems on these roads when there's still snow present and we still have fluctuating temperatures tonight it's supposed to get down to about 23 degrees that's the coldest day or the coldest night in a couple weeks so far right here is a good amount of slop but I am fully prepared in case I was to get stuck I am probably carrying enough fuel that if I needed to, I could idle for three weeks straight. But, obviously I wouldn't do that. I'd be shutting on and off throughout the night and could stay out here such a long time before freezing to death. But also this time of year, it's not really cold enough at night to be that dangerous. It's not got enough food. I only have two gallons of water on me. But I also have a tons, of, tons of other drinks, and I have water purifying equipment. I could take it out of a muddy puddle and drink it without any issue at all. But my biggest issue out here would be the clearance problem. I just stopped again to take a look at another pipe, which I am assuming is very crushed. Just a little bit of trickle coming out of it. This one might be metal, if that's part of it, or that might be part of the old one. Yeah, I, I'm assuming this one's probably metal. You see the water is entering through some kind of hole right here. Yep, I can feel it. That's a metal pipe. Crushed and crumpled all on the end. But, you know how long it probably took to get rusted like that? Probably two three decades at least which has a much higher life expectancy than plastic in a situation like this because that kind of pipe doesn't crumple very easily compared to plastic which is very soft it'll crush over time not necessarily one big load going over it sometimes just pulling over on the sides of these roads makes you a little nervous because at least when you're in the middle you can see other people's tracks and you can see how deep they sunk but when you go over on the edge near the drainage ditch to let someone pass or just pulling over, you're kind of going into the unknown. Right here's another culvert pipe. I can see it's a little twisted, but it's still working pretty well. As we get deeper into the woods, the snow is just going to get a little worse. Look at all the tree damage. You know, I've never seen so many trees down before on these roads. And I've been coming out here for years. I've literally been traveling on these roads, even with my family, since I was a smaller than I can remember. Here's another big blob of snow up here. I'm thinking this is probably the last mud season I'm ever gonna have to use my car out here. Because this car, it just doesn't have the clearance despite being rugged. It's also up there now to like 122,000 miles, no, 322,000 miles on the odometer. So, I think in the spring, maybe another month or so, I'm going to get the truck that I ordered. And that thing is going to have a fuel tank that um, 
what, what's the word for it? It has a transfer pump, so it has actually uh, two fuel tanks. The auxiliary fuel tank is big enough to fill the original fuel tank two times at a push of a button. So anytime I go to the gas station, I'll be able to take on three times as much fuel as the normal truck and don't have to go to the gas station as often. Perfect for a job out here because for I think this is my fourth year working out here. I've had to carry six gas cans of fuel and six gas cans of fuel for this is almost three fill-ups so I can go pretty far. Now that's the, yeah I, I had to spend the extra money and get the auxiliary fuel tank. You can get an auxiliary fuel tank for any vehicle that has a full-size spare tire under the back and you just put the spare tire in the car or on the roof or you can get a modification to put it on the back of the car like a Jeep or even the front bumper whatever and the when I'm I'm gonna have a welder put that second tank on while he's at it he's gonna put a second receiver hitch on the front of the truck so that I can have a winch line and I can just unplug it from the back and move it to the front vice versa whatever's easier to recover myself if I get stuck in the mud. I've only been stuck out here once where I had to be pulled out and I've, I've got temporarily stuck dozens of other times but I always was able to dig myself out, throw sticks or something under it. I always was able to figure it out other than that one time which I was out here for 19 hours and amazingly I had to idle for all 19 hours because the exhaust pipe was under the mud bubbling. I knew if I shut it off it would have gone in there and hardened and I wouldn't have started again. So I left it running for 19 hours, used less than a quarter tank of fuel. It was amazing how little it used. And that was a weird time of the year. At night it was cold enough that the drainage ditch next to me completely froze over and I needed the heat and then that next day it was warm enough that I actually put the air conditioning on and it was warm enough that frogs actually came out because this time of year up here is not frog season yet but where I live every time we get a cold night the frogs keep bouncing in and out of temporary hibernation which is pretty cool to see the, the every every year I'm always looking for frogs the first couple warm days when they first pop out of hibernation I know a lot of people mentioned it in one of my frog videos when I was showing them all and they look purple. People ask me if I had a weird light or lens. Nope, the frogs, most of them actually look purple the day, actually the whole week they come out of hibernation. It's because the whole winter, they're still alive and they're still, you know, growing skin. And their skin has been building up because they're not able to molt when they've been underground all winter. It's kind of just building up and their skin is like kind of dead and falling off. Whoa! Oh, just hit a soft spot there and I sunk probably not not too deep, maybe just four or five inches, but it it yanked me a little bit right there. You never know on these roads, they're unpredictable. I didn't see the mud coming. Yeah, sometimes you can be driving on a perfectly dry dirt road, but right beneath the surface is a melting frost heave, which is basically like quit sand. You just sink right on into it. Crunch. Oh, we got a part of it stuck under there. That's okay, it'll fall off eventually. Oh, I think it already did. All right, everyone, I just got out of the vehicle again. Just want to take a look at this pipe. There's probably nothing wrong. Just want to see why it's building up a little bit. See what we got here. I don't think we have to get out the big high boots or anything. Now, there is a little bit of a blockage. Look at all that foam just getting sucked in there. This is a plastic pipe. It's just the grass getting stuck in there. All the dead grass breaking free as the flood waters come by. We just open that up and this little pool is probably going to drop back a few inches. Yeah, we got that thing nice and open and all that foam just disappeared into there. I remember a few years back 
we had an issue like this that was actually backing up the whole pipe. You see, as the water comes out, especially in the summertime, when this aquatic grass is near the end of the pipe, it can keep kind of building itself up higher and higher over the years and cause it to back up the grass itself. The best example was that nasty orange culvert pipe unclogging, if you ever saw that. As I was breaking down the wall of grass, it released a giant wall of bright orange iron oxidizing bacteria into the river it was dumping in. All right, everyone, so this time of year, the snow has already melted, and this is what we call mud season. It's very soggy while the water, look at this, this was definitely flooding over. Look at all this water. This area is already marked. They know there's an issue. But as I'm driving around, if I see anything that looks very dangerous, that is not already clearly noticed or marked, I'll get out with my flagging tape, put up some orange ribbons to make sure the road crew knows that pipe needs to be replaced. Come the, well, this is already springtime, but typically they don't start replacing until mud season's over because the log trucks are very heavy, all their machines are very heavy, and they would sink into these roads. There's not many vehicles that you can drive down this road other than a passenger vehicle that's not gonna sink extremely deep. And now that all the snow is done melting, most of the water levels have receded enough that blockages can easily be removed. There's no more ice. The blockages, for the most part, are no longer frozen. And look at this area of the woods. Now we're dark with all the evergreens. Ooh we're sliding and just in case we do come across a really bad spot I still do have the tire chains on me but I don't think we'll need them this area got very very snowy very fast especially when you're hanging around all this snow right here this is where mud can open up out of nowhere because the ground is a hundred percent still frozen underneath the snow Hasn't been able to thaw out yet. Looks like we have a beautiful sunset happening tonight. Now right here, gotta go really slow. This is pretty deep snow on the road. Amazingly, there's zero in the woods. That's because in the woods, a lot of the snow doesn't actually get down to the ground just melts up inside the trees but right there it's so densely packed because these are all used by snowmobiles when the roads are closed really nice sunset happening does anyone remember this section of road we were here back in December and it was below zero the night we were sleeping out here this beaver pond was completely frozen over with a couple inches and as we were Unclogging it, the water started dropping and it was cracking like crazy. And what was cool about it was when we opened the culvert, a big gush of muddy water came out over pure white snow. This nasty water, it just looked so cool. But I think we have another unclogging today because as soon as the water is clear of ice, that's when beavers potentially start building. They're most accurate in the summer when it's warm, but they will get going right away. Just like we determined back in the winter time, this is a secondary pond. You see how the road goes around the sharp corner? Once it's up on that hill, you can see there's a much bigger pond back there held up by another dam. So dropping this, beavers won't even notice until they come to do maintenance on their secondary pond. Well, you can see right here, there's a pretty solid beaver blockage right there. So I'm going to finally put on some boots, even though I don't think I'm really going in the water. And we'll get camera number two out, see what's going on. Oh, that, that's nice to see. Some moose tracks. Those guys every year are becoming more and more rare up here. I used to travel on these roads in the dusk hours like this. I'd see dozens of them, especially the early hours of the night dozens of them. Now sometimes you can go a week or two without seeing a single moose. Camera number two. All right everyone, camera number two is going. I got the big high boots on after all. 
Let's go in the water and see what we can do. I'd rather be out so I can just pull things back and forth. Works way better and faster. All of that is brand new beaver debris. Stubborn stick. That's a big one. Look at how long some of these things inside there are. All right, everyone, completely clear. How long did that take us? Like two minutes? And look at the other side. We just got so much water going. Wow, it was about two minutes. Tons of water coming out the other side. Just, just make sure nothing got stuck. We're good. The reason you see it acting like that is because there's a rock right at the bottom of it that's why it can't come out completely smooth just wanted to make sure nothing got stuck against the rock where more debris could just build and build making a harder blockage long term you see what I mean up close how the water's acting a little weird look at the amount of moose tracks in this road I have not seen so many moose tracks in one spot in a good couple years. Just look right here, there's so many tracks. Very fresh ones too. I'm hoping in the next couple hours, cause I'm gonna keep driving on this road for maybe another two hours or so before I find a place to sleep. Because just because it gets dark doesn't mean I am gonna stop looking for blockages and issues I can flag. Still going to look around. So this was probably going to drop about one foot of water because it's a secondary pond. The beavers may or may not show up tonight. Sometimes secondary ponds, I've literally seen it take a month. It depends on the beaver family. Sometimes they have dozens of them that they're maintaining. Now, if this was a primary pond, that is when they would show up almost immediately after you leave. They, they notice the drop in water no matter where they are in that pond, whether they're inside the lodge or not, they are taking notice to that immediately. And they need a pond to survive the winter. That's why if this is a primary pond, never do it when there's about to be ice on the top. But now it's spring, even if it was their primary pond, we can take them down this time of year if it's affecting a roadway. Now, because this is a private company, even if it was a primary pond, because it's private property, legally you could take it down. But myself, morally, I will not mess with a primary pond in the wintertime. Although, some other guys who work for the company, they will. And I have showed that in the middle of winter. A giant beaver lodge out in the middle of an empty pond with all kinds of shattered ice. Usually the beaver's going to die in that situation because of predators. Without the water is not necessarily going to kill them. It's the predator issue. Also, a lot of the food that they collected was under that water. Now it's trapped by ice. This is my absolute favorite time to work when it's in the 30s and 40s outside. Now, it depends what I'm doing. I love certain things about summer. You can just jump in the water no matter how hot it is 
and you're not gonna freeze or have to get out of the water at any time. This time of year, if I do get flooded, I'll continue working for 10, maybe 20 minutes, especially if my big high boots flood, because they'll start acting like a wetsuit once my body slightly warms the water up. But also another cool thing about this time of year is you don't have to carry a cooler if you want to have refrigerated foods. I just am running the heat in here slightly, still keeping the inside here at around 45 or 50. Now, it's cold enough where certain things, they'll be fine where I can eat them tomorrow. I'm not gonna leave it in here multiple days though. But tonight, I can tell by morning there will be frost on the windshield. We'll get down a little bit in temps. Now this road right here, you see how high up the road is compared to the ditches? A few areas I'm feeling are a little slippery, so I gotta be careful not to slide down into the ditch, but overall I like this kind of road better because it drains better, it being kind of high up. Now, it all depends how it's built. A lot of times this is just fill that they use to make it higher and less mud, but sometimes they will make it high just to cover up some difficult bedrock which uh, water can still get up through that and cause it to become soft but typically these higher roads like this are much better but they cost a lot more to build that's why they're not all like this this right here is no longer a main artery but it was for many years and they abandoned it a couple years started using it again they just used it last year in a certain area not the whole length of it but this year they will be using it once again here's a pipe oh, that one's got a pretty big hump and you see humps like that we're gonna get out and flag So what happened right here was, most likely in the middle of winter, when the road became frosty, as the water underneath the road freezes, it pushes objects up. Culverts, rocks can suddenly come up. Sometimes they stay up and they have to be removed by heavy equipment, but sometimes they drop back down and create a hole. Haven't come across any of those today, but if you guys have been seeing my other videos, um, you may have seen other ones I've showed. Now something like this, this is totally going to get crushed. As of now, this pipe has no damage. It could be lifted out, the trench could be redug, and it could be put back in. But if, it's, if it stays like this, that is going to get crushed by log trucks extremely fast. And if it stays like that, even passenger vehicles are going to eventually crush this thing. Now, another thing that you got to watch out for, and it's really not a big deal, barely anyone uses these roads, and if you are tailgating a log truck, you deserve what you get. But if a log truck hits this because the driver doesn't see it, a couple logs may fall off. On a lot of these roads, their logs are not required to be secured that well until they actually go on to the public arteries. Now everybody, notice how the road looks dry. I just went down a dead end part of the road and on my way back I'm going to show you my tracks are wet. I am actually splashing up mud that is right below the surface that you just can't see until you already drove through it. So everyone I wanted to show you this. You see they put a whole bunch of water bars so there's not any erosion. They planted grass here but it, it's having pretty it's having trouble growing as you can see. They planted this over five years ago, but it's not thick because they just planted it right on top of the sandy road. Anyways, this used to be for a logging ferry. They would be able to put one piece of equipment on it or one log trailer without the tractor at a time. There was a big rig here that they, would, they left here indefinitely at a little parking area. It would... Okay, the logging ferry operator, I think is what they did was that he would go get the tractor trailer off of the boat. He would put an empty one back on. He would leave the cab here, and then they would bring the empty one to the island. Up here in the middle of nowhere, there are so many uninhabited, massive islands, and they log them. Ooh, that rock just moved a little bit. But as you can see, most of the bodies of water up here are still frozen. 
you know what I've, you know what I've really wanted to do for a while and I might do it over the summer I've always wanted to go to one of the lakes in Maine because there's a, an abundance of uninhabited islands thought it'd be cool to camp on one uh, look at this see how slushy this is wow this would be so much fun to kayak through this slush wow look at this that would be so much fun kayaking through this it would be so much fun wow and it's really hard to judge how the conditions are going to be from year to year even if i came back out here next week with a kayak this, this is going to be gone this is going to melt very fast this time of year you see right now i'm having a little bit of dinner these are refrigerated chicken tenders from the prepared section at the supermarket you see over here i got all my fuel these are four of my gas cans there's another four in the back at the moment got some flavored water some water here some paper towels for cleaning myself up and walking in the woods to take poops i got some wet wipes here which are awesome for cleaning up your hands after you have something greasy to eat good for washing your face sponge bathing yourself if you've been out here for like a week straight in the back you see i got all my bedding uh and that's a spare tire right there pulling over here because this is very muddy and messed up. I highly doubt we're gonna see anyone else on this road tonight. So right here, we have a good amount of water, more than typical because there's still a good amount of snow melting. Zero blockage. Now the other direction, you see the drainage ditch is pretty flooded. Just wanna see if there is any sort of blockage. There is a good amount of flow coming out of there, so probably minimal. Maybe the end of the culvert's just pushed down. Let's see what we got. Oh, we got a big plug there of grass. We gotta get camera number two out for that. Now, unclogging that is not gonna solve this problem. I could feel here, all the way up about 100 feet is pretty soft. This is going to have to be fixed with the excavator. This ditch is gonna have to be dug out nice and deep so all of this can drain back to the pipe we're about to unplug right now also the ditch needs to be dug out so even if this was plugged this water shouldn't be sitting here it should be looking it should be able to go to the one i just showed you that's all clear Woo! all right everyone i just stepped down into the water it's not very deep not deep at all could have done this probably with my regular boots Oh, that's pushing it a little bit. But here's the pipe, very plugged up. It may have been the beavers. I definitely see some sticks, but it, I, I think it was just a spring thaw, just pushed a bunch of grass in. We might be able to just give it a push and it might slide all the way through. I'm just gonna give it a little push. Oh. Yeah. Just push it right through. I bet that looked awesome on number two. I just heard it just go. So, what do we got there? The grass is also kind of pushed over, hanging down into it. As I rip it up, look at that, it's green underneath. This water is already, yeah, summer's coming. Still got a little bit of debris. I am, I am just beyond shocked. This is one of the smallest pipes I've ever seen out here. Like that is definitely 12 inches. They didn't even put out a 18 inch pipe like most of them. Based on just the water going in it now, this area should have like, oh, what should this area have? 
maybe like two feet at least. This is dropping back very quickly. There's not much water here. This will all be gone, I would say, 10 minutes or so down to the level it will stay at. Yep. Now that the water's dropping, it is possible that the current's able to grab more grass and push it back in there. Yeah, the way it was put there, I don't think it was the beaver at all. Definitely flowing a lot better. Get down in there. Completely clear, nothing got stuck in the end. We are doing fantastic. Time to continue on my way. Even though it's getting dark, I'm not even close to being tired yet. We're gonna keep traveling out here for a while. We just gotta keep notice to any high water on the side and we might get out and go look at it if we do see any. Now that it's getting a little darker out, I think I'm gonna go get my portable off-road light that just plugs into the cigarette plug and I put that on the side of the car shining down into the ditch just to see what's up. I think, um, I think we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna go park up here. There's like an interchange. We're just gonna leave the car here. This is a abandoned road. You can't go more than a mile up this. So I'm just gonna park right here and we're gonna walk down there. There's a good amount of water in that ditch. We're gonna see if there's anything going on and then we'll continue further down here. This road is starting to get pretty snowy also. All right, everyone. So we're just gonna go down here a little bit. Looking around. I'm the only person who's been down here all day. Not a single other track. A lot of these might just be remaining tracks from snowmobilers. So there's a good amount of water right here to the left. We're going to see if we got ourselves a pipe or not. Yep, we got ourselves a culvert pipe. 100% right here. See the ground starting to move a little bit. Wow, look at this pipe. That's the downside of a metal pipe. This could slice your tires up pretty well. Thankfully, the sharpest part's right in the middle where you're typically not going to drive. This pipe 100% needs to be replaced. Yeah, it looks like the water's just flowing over. I don't even see it. Don't even see the pipe. But this is probably still kind of frozen as this thaws out. It's just going to become a muddier mess. So yeah, no clog at all. Nothing going in there. This whole thing got to be replaced. I'm going to get my orange marking tape out and we will put some tags on that. Do you ever have a feeling you're being watched? Now that's starting to get dim, especially when I'm walking around out here and it's completely dark. There's almost a guarantee something's watching you. Whether it's a big old moose or a bird, there's always something out here watching you. It's unlikely anything would attack, but don't want to sneak up on a moose. So we got three pieces of ribbon, one, two, and a really long one on this side since there wasn't a great place to put it. All right, everyone, we got that one squared away. So that's probably the last one where I'm gonna be able to do anything without having my headlamp on. Or next time I'll just park the car there and walk in front of the headlights. So we're gonna go up this dead end road now because there's actually a swamp like right here to the left. I've never seen a blockage at this pipe. There used to be beavers back in the day I could see evidence of, but I'm just looking at this swamp right here because sometimes there's a moose hanging out. I'm not seeing anything and I can also looking over, the pipe is 100% clear and there is not a good spot on this road to turn around unless I go like a mile and I don't wanna do that so I'm gonna back all the way out. Chop, boom. <laughs> All right, so this is an example of one of those rocks you could tell it was just recently pushed up. See how the ground is all puckered around it? Trying to push out that rock. So do we have a pipe here? It looks like maybe. No, we don't. 
but we have a lot of water sitting right here in the ditch so there's got to be a pipe not too far out this has got to be our pipe right here which means this ditch needs to be excavated a little bit so the water can get down to it and this pipe here needs to be replaced piece of junk plastic pipe and hitting getting hit so many times big rig probably drove through there whole end of it's pushed up whether it be from a big truck hitting it and it kind of going up or maybe a frost heave again i'm going to pull the vehicle up a little more and i will flag it Almost already went through an entire roll of marking tape. See, I put one on each side over to the right. There wasn't a good little tree on the left, so put a band coming down from a tree being held down by a rock. All right. I better mark that one. This is like one I almost don't mark because it's not that big of a deal but if they do decide to start logging this this will be an issue now that I actually got out the ground is all sinking around it, so I think that was pushed up by a frost heave, and now that it's up, the ground is falling in where the pipe was, so that the pipe won't be able to go back down, but there's going to be a big divot and little sinkholes along the edge of it. Sometimes out here at night, it can get a little scary, because on roads like this, this time of year, Sometimes somebody else won't come across your path for over a week. There is no signal out here. I do have a CB radio just in case I might be able to get someone with that. But that's why you gotta have a lot of food because someone might not find you for a little while. There's no signals, nothing out here. There's no gas stations, sometimes for over 150 miles. That's the reason being you need a lot of fuel. In these dark areas I'm being weary so I don't sink. I can tell the car struggled a little bit right there. That mud was sticky. All right, we have ourselves another flooded area. I'm gonna pull up a little more because I can tell exactly where the pipe is. I can tell I'm sinking pretty deep. My car is sitting in good mud right now. So I am seeing someone else's tire tracks and moose tracks. This could have been a long time ago, especially since there was no tracks in the snow back there. So here we have a pipe, also probably pushed out of the ground by a frost heave. So there's more moose than people out here this time of year. So here's the end of the pipe. It's open, that's not the problem. You see, oh, you can't see, let me put my headlamp on. You see right here, needs to be dug out by an excavator to connect the ditch to right here. That's what the problem is. And even if they did do that, this pipe needs to be put back in deeper. It looks like it's probably in good enough condition. They might be able to save it for another decade. I don't know how bad off the bottom of the pipe is or whatnot, but They'll figure it out at that moment. Just gonna put a couple pieces of tape here on either side of it. Another mud hole. Wow, I can't even make a time-lapse video more than a minute, because we just keep coming across one after another. Even just stepping out, I can feel why the car's struggling. Look what I'm driving through. See this? I could potentially get stuck on this road. Very, very soft right here. And it's because of this issue. And it looks like, again, the water just cannot get to the pipe to go under the road. So as soon as I get back in, I'm actually going to back up and gun it through here. Because I can already feel the road is stabilizing now that we're getting away from the water. So the pipe is probably working fine. It's right here. And this one's put in pretty deep. 
This one is even deep enough that that plastic one won't get crushed unless a giant big rig goes through here during mud season. All right. Ground is definitely more stable here, so I'm just going to have to back up and go fast. All right. Reversing a little bit. You might think I'm crazy, but it's happened to me before. The road has opened up because I've gone through things like that too slow. All right, that was, I wouldn't have happened there, but I don't want to take my chances. Yep, the road is definitely more stable now. I have made a video on this section of road in the past. I think this section of road is very dumb. Unless their intention was to later raise the entire grade up which they never did. It's been like this for at least five years. See where the culvert pipe is? That giant hump in the road. But the water crosses the road before it can even get to the pipe. And there's another pipe right here along this hill that the water is going in instead. So take a look at this picture right here, everyone. We're gonna get out and take a look at this. I don't think I'm gonna be able to proceed. This looks like a place I'm gonna get stuck. Do you see all the erosion, all these little channels of water everywhere? This part of the road may need to, we gotta look first. All right, so this section of road, we gotta get out and inspect. All right, first off the bat, gonna focus for me there you go first off the bat look what I'm driving in the road is already noticeably very soft and look what happened here here is why it's important to maintain a road you got some moose tracks the moose enjoy the mud but they're the only ones who enjoy going in the mud up here the drainage ditch which is back here this is the drainage ditch it's completely filled in from neglect and it's pouring into the road. The entire edge of the road is now washing out as a result of the ditch right there. The water can't get to the ditch anymore. Entire thing needs to be redone with excavators after mud season and this entire road is too soggy to travel down. So this is the pipe. All this water here is supposed to be going in the pipe, this hump you're seeing right here. Right here. Barely anything's going in it at the moment. So we got a four-way intersection. There's a road up there, which I think I'm gonna turn around in. And we have this road up here, which eventually will go down that once this dries out a little bit. But the road is so soft right here, I don't think we should travel down it at all. Actually, right here is pretty rocky. So if I just got through that little part, yeah, I think I probably could pass down this. Oh, getting soft again. Can you see that the whole road is just about washed out going on for a while? Looks like more culverts here. Yeah, this is very very soft too yeah i'm not going to take the risk going down this road any further i'm just going to mark ribbons there and i'm going to put out a little caution sign all right so i just put up two bands here so anyone can see this just so they can know that there's an issue and they can inspect it for themselves before they decide whether or not to turn around now most Jeeps, pickup trucks, big SUVs, I don't think would get stuck here. You know, maybe. I don't know how bad that mud is. If that mud, as bad as it was what I was standing on, if that goes down a couple feet, then it's pretty bad. But I have no way of knowing how deep this mud actually goes. So, I'm not going to go down there. Definitely not going to go down there with the vehicle I have at the moment. I know to some people they're gonna say in my comments that this road doesn't look that bad at all. Well, 
I have gotten myself into trouble on roads that looked like nothing before because there's hidden dangers during this time of year. And you see right there, that's a log that must have fallen off one of the trucks. There's no way a log truck could go down this road this time of year. They're too heavy. A normal log truck weighs about 80,000 pounds. In the winter time, out here they'll run trucks up to 200,000 pounds when the road is frozen and they won't damage anything. Yeah, right now this road is feeling soft. Yep, well, oh, I'm sinking so deep right now, I can feel it. I, I, it just scraped against the bottom. Yep, we're going back. We will, gonna go back to the next major interchange and we'll start exploring another road until it gets to what I feel is too hazardous or we make it through one or the other. Oh, that ice is trying to throw me over off the road. Very slippery. That right there is the reason why I have not taken my snow tires off while most people have. Because I still encounter snow and ice well into the month of May. tree from earlier. just want to get out and look at this thing for a minute. I wonder if that thing could be just pivoted out of the road. Let's go and look. That was easy. This part of the road is what we call the hairpin turn. In the summer when it's all grown in, this I would say is one of the most dangerous parts of the road when you got log trucks speeding around these corners. The hairpin loop is what we call that. As soon as I stop in a spot that's not very muddy, I want to get underneath the vehicle and inspect. Something's starting to make a lot of noise suddenly. I am slowly backing up because I just hit a gigantic hole. Yeah, I just hit it again right there. You know, I just want to get out. I'm Definitely 100% flagging it. Oh, there's so much mud. Not even pulling off the side of the road. This area needs to be flagged. I just hit something so hard that things in the car went flying, and I need to make sure the gas cans all the way in the rear didn't tip over. Because I'm already smelling gas fumes a little bit in a few times in the past. I didn't notice them leaking as a result of me already smelling them, and there was a pretty big puddle of fuel that was right on my bed. All right, so this is where I just pulled off, or yeah, tried to pull on the side of the road. Look at this mud, look at this mud. It's like quit sand, you see this? I easily could have sunk, look at this, as I do it with my feet, it is getting deeper and deeper. That mud could easily get stuck in this. It's like quit sand. In fact, that's what I did get stuck in that one time. It's right here's where I just backed into with my car, see this? Look at this. If I would have stayed parked there, see this? I'm slowly sinking into it. Dangerous. But somewhere back here, this is also where I tried backing up. I just backed into that. Further up here, I'm assuming it's right here. I'm gonna put ribbons on it. This is what I just hit so hard. 
vehicle hit the stop blocks. I hit something real hard right here. Look at this culvert pipe. This is a doesn't look like much, but that's a pretty big dip. We're gonna put ribbons up. Oh look, they already have a little pink ribbon. Tiny little one. That might just be marking where the pipe is. But I want to put something extremely noticeable up. Just went into the drainage ditch to wash off the big high boots before I get back in. Oh my gosh. First moose of the night. Running off into the woods. Now check out this section of road. Now we're back onto one of the main arteries that they do plow and there are current log trucks going down it. Right here, I'm sure you saw that. This is a very big dip because there's a crushed plastic pipe that's gonna have to be replaced. Right up here, I tried to slam the brakes on but I did hit the stop blocks the first time going over this next one. Now this area of road, we're not gonna be marking it because there's just so many of them. At this point, right here, this is the one. Boom, big bump, that's a big abrupt one. And then there's a big hole right here, right after it. And right now in the road, you see there's another plastic culvert pipe completely sunk. And that's a very big hit. You gotta go over that slow. But anybody who has got to this point of the road should already be on the lookout. Because that right there is probably at least a second dozen to one I've seen. Right here's another one. And look at all the potholes. This time of year, this is about to be pothole season until mud season is over. Look at this, another one. You, you just saw right off to the right, maybe, the piece of junk culvert broken and sticking up. You see now that we have got very deep into Maine. Well, that was the wrong word. We're now very far north in Maine. Despite it still being the 3rd of May, we have a big snow bank and over a foot of snow in the woods at this point. This is pothole season. This road is just gonna get worse for a few weeks. But I have seen roads that are so bad, you have to go down them at like three miles an hour. The car is rocking back and forth, it's horrible. But they've been doing better maintenance over the last couple years. I have not seen a road that horrid in a while. It's time for a snack while we're driving around out here. I love these. This road is getting some very bumpy areas now, and I looked underneath the back of the car. I didn't see anything broken, but when I go over a big bump, it sure sounds like I broke something. But after inspecting, I can't see anything. It also sounds like from the mud, I probably have a couple rocks between the brake disc and the guard that happens sometimes. Usually they break themselves out or sometimes I gotta go back there and physically bend the bottom of it so they can escape. See what the road looks like right now? I've seen it where this goes on for miles. You see right now, I'm going by pretty smooth at a couple miles an hour, but if I had to do this all night, I would get nowhere. Typically I'll just drive over these potholes at a good 30 miles an hour and you know, the car can handle it pretty well. It's just making a lot of noise because I think something snapped in the suspension. But handling has not changed from whatever that may be. But I am making a lot of noise at the moment. Oh, big hole. Whoa. Oh, more bumps. Probably frost heaves. It might even still be frozen now. Might be a big disaster over the top of this hill. I think this is a swamp coming up. Here's more potholes. Yeah, I think this is a swamp right down in here. A couple times in the past few years, this has washed out during the spring thaw, but I don't see anything today. One time it was so bad that they had to fill the void with logs so people could still drive over it. I don't see any damage this time. But 
that culvert pipe right there is mangled. All right, it does look like water may have been crossing right there. Wow. Yeah, now we're getting into those spots where the car is kind of rocking back and forth. That wasn't that bad, but it is getting sloppy. You see right here, somebody else has taken the stick and jammed it into the middle of the road to mark this culvert pipe. So what am I looking at there? Are they marking the hump? No, they're not marking the hump. They are marking, there's a couple holes right there opening up into the culvert pipe and I can see the sharp edges. It is a metal pipe that could easily cut your tires. We have just come up to another one. How bad is this one looking? I'm personally not seeing anything right there, but I do see a dip. And I just drove through the dip. All right, everyone, it's now 10 o'clock at night and we have a very wide section of road here. I'm stopping just to look at this. You see, where I'm shining my light right now, this is the drainage ditch. But you see, over the years, the grader pushing over, the drainage ditch is completely blocked and it's also filled in. There's giant trees growing in the ditch. Those trees are gonna have to be cut down and that ditch needs to be dug out because there's a massive flood right here in the road. And without even looking around, I can tell it is completely unable to get to the culvert and I don't even know where the culvert would be. But you see the water is now crossing the road causing more and more erosion damage. We look down the other side there's a tractor trailer tire down there, but I just looking for the pipe. I don't even know if we'll be able to figure out where the pipe is. Because the pipe obviously hasn't been working in a while. Look what we just came across on the road here. This is blocking almost the entire road. Did it just fall down? can't believe that's there. It hasn't been storming in a couple days. This is a main artery. Yeah, this vehicle. It's a good thing I'm going to be replacing this soon. I wonder if this car will even pass emissions this year. Just getting out. I noticed I smelled a little something. Looked at the tailpipe. I think it's burning oil. Never had that problem before. But we are getting up there in miles. I wasn't able to get a good shot of it, but I just saw a bobcat walk across the street and it leaped so far over the drainage ditch once it got up to it. Take a look at all these logs, everyone, that we're driving by. They are stockpiling them because the trucks can't come out when the roads are this muddy. Look at this big wall. That's just one stack. And I see another one coming up. Here's another one, just stack after stack. They're just waiting for the roads to become solid enough where the trucks can come down. At first I thought this was gonna be a beaver dam, it's not. Not a beaver dam. This was put here with heavy equipment, it looks like. Because this water is supposed to be crossing here in this culvert pipe, and this starts a whole new system. Yeah, that's this is why the whole dam failed. Look at the pipe. See why it's up like that? A big truck ran over here, and it made this push up as that got crushed. Is there more than one pipe? Because there's some pretty big ripples right here. See these in the road? Um, no, there's not, which is really weird. Well, nothing we can do here, but I am gonna flag it. All right, everyone. We are at the place we're gonna sleep for the night. Then we'll set back out in the morning. This is actually the same exact spot I parked when I did that camping video called 
camping in the middle of the road. I would like to walk up there and see if there's anything left of it. The entire road beyond the snowbank here, I'm just going to park here because the road's already blocked. But I want to walk up there. I'll, I'm very curious tomorrow morning if there's any piles or anything left over because I had to dig out three feet of snow back when I did that camp. Right now, what I'm doing right now is I want to park crooked, blocking this a little bit so I can hide things behind the car, even though there's no one out here and I doubt anyone would steal things. Just want to park a little crooked so I can, I have a lot of things I want to get out of the car so I can comfortably sleep. Like my spare tire typically goes in the front seat and my four gas cans in the rear go outside and that's about all that's gonna go outside. All right, everyone, so now I'm in the back of the car and gonna have a bedtime snack. So this is what I got for another time. I got an energy drink because sometimes I'm just so tired when I'm out here trying to find a place. Um, this right here is like a smoothie. This is um, some kind of citrus drink. Got some bananas. Now this stuff here is the stuff that requires refrigeration. This will be my breakfast. Now, it's I just warmed it up really warm in here, but just give it about two hours. We'll be back into like a refrigerator. I think I'm gonna have some of this cheese while I'm waiting or while I'm about to go to bed. So this right here, this should get me through at least a couple days. And then I have a bunch of trail mix in here, like back here, got some MREs and other stuff, canned food hidden underneath the mattress and everything else I threw outside. All right, everyone, I think I'm gonna end the video right about here. So I'm still gonna drive around a little bit more. And if I do find anything else, it'll be put in the video before this part of it, but. Um, I appreciate all you guys who have been following this channel over the years. This channel has grown more than I ever could have imagined when I started it. I started this channel when I was like 14 years old. It started off as a channel with just fish tanks and stuff. That's basically what it started off as if you looked at my older videos, just fish tanks. I added on trains and stuff. Added, I did a couple of drain videos back then. They didn't really get many views, but then suddenly something happened. They just started taking off after one day. This channel's been making drainage videos now for about six years, going on seven. So this channel was created back in 2014. But I am amazed at how much support I got from everyone in doing this stuff. It's helped this channel grow a whole ton. And this year, because of all the increased viewage on this channel and also with the people helping support this channel on my Patreon account, I have been able to afford a very good down payment on a new truck that I'm going to have on the road pretty soon. I bought a base model Toyota truck. I ordered it, I should say now, seven months ago. Then about three months ago, the Toyota dealership told me to come in and they talked to me. They didn't show it to me. They didn't even show me pictures of it, but they told me, unfortunately, the truck I ordered was involved in a train derailment. The train fell off the tracks and it completely crushed the roof of the truck. He said it was. they're just gonna write it off as a total loss. But the manager told me, okay, we're gonna go ahead and order another one, but it's gonna take another three or four months. We understand that this is a major inconvenience to you since you wanted to have this vehicle on the road before you started your work this year on this, these roads. Because right now I am actually doing a part-time job on these roads. Probably every video I've done before, they are all on my own accord. I'm doing all my own stuff. A bunch of towns know I'm doing it. They don't really care that I'm doing it. Out here, I've done this for a while, but one of the logging companies took notice and they offered me a part-time job that I just started. Actually, yesterday was my first day starting this, and this is gonna be the most fun job ever. I can do it on my own time. I can do as many hours a day as I want, can sleep whenever I want. I can work all night, sleep all day. It doesn't really matter 
when I do it. I'm going around looking at pipes. I can unblock them. I was told none of these logging companies actually have a job unblocking them. They just come out with the heavy machinery once it already starts flooding. So preventative maintenance is a very big thing. And they've never actually done that before. But they offered me a job doing it. So it actually, the reason they offered me a job is because someone in my comments trying to get me in trouble actually started sending all my stuff saying I was causing malicious damage to the logging companies. But it backfired. Now I have a very fun job. I, I Most people, for some reason, think this job is horrible. And they don't understand why I enjoy it. But I really do enjoy doing this kind of stuff. Anyways... The manager of that dealership said, for the trouble, we're going to give you a TRD Pro at no extra cost. And that should be here in the next month or so. So I'm very excited for that. That thing is never going to get stuck. And it's got all the crawl control and stuff, which is very cool. It, it even has, they told me I can look, there's cameras on the sides of it. I can look through on the little screen to see how close I am to hazards and stuff. That'll be really cool, but I'm going to be wiping them cameras off all the time. And then I mentioned the best thing about that is, well, we, oh yeah, we're back to the main road. Um, the vehicle is interest-free for two years. The payment plan goes six years, but no one ever says I can't put more payments on, and if I get it paid off in two years, it's completely interest-free, which is I think is an awesome deal. Toyota's doing that at the moment. Interest-free if you pay it off in a certain amount of time but I have a six year plan. After two years, it'll kick in, I think, 6%. But I appreciate that. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a great day.